Hey guys, I'm Alex Pierce from LightSail VR. In this video, I'm going to be giving you a tutorial on how to do image-based lighting with Assimilate Live Effects and Quasar Science. We're gonna go over how to program the fixtures themselves, what profile you need to be on, how many pixels you need to have, all that sort of stuff. We're also gonna be looking at Assimilate Live Effects, how to set up the fixtures correctly in, uh, in the software. We'll be looking at some of the features of the software. So first, I wanna just jump in and talk about what this stage is and what's going on. So behind me, you see we have an LED wall that's being driven by Live Effects on the PC over here. And then the lights are all actually be driven from a separate machine on my MacBook Pro. Um, this is being done wirelessly, so I can control that and walk around the stage and just dial in the lights as needed. That's a kind of a different setup here, but it's how I have it set up right now. So right here, you can see this is actually a lighting fixture. There's 47 tubes of the Quasar Science um, uh, eight foot tubes here. You can see the ceiling here, the overheads. We also have eight foot tubes. Uh, on the right side, you can also see a little bit more over there. And there is another fixture over here, which is the double rainbow uh, four foot tubes right there. So um, you can see if I, if I just keep pointing here, you can see I can actually change this to be pixel mapped somewhere else. And we're gonna look at that in the software as well. And I can change the master uh, brightness. I can also change these individually, of course. So I can break, make this just this fixture brighter or darker. I can change this to be a solid color. If I want, I can change that to be a different color. There's a lot of things that we can do in live effects and we'll talk a little bit about those uh, as we go along. But I wanted you to be somewhat aware of what this space looks like. Okay, once you have your light plugged in, go ahead and power it on. If it's not on already, you can press and hold down the power button here. Now, if you press the power button and release, it's gonna give you some more information. So this shows us uh, some information on the color temperature and the spectrum. If I press it one more time, you can see DMX is inactive. If I press it again, you get a lot of information like firmware, et cetera. And I'm just gonna cycle through here, uh, back to manual. And if you click this button here, it'll turn off the light uh, without turning, powering it down. I'll go ahead and keep that on for now. And then these buttons down here, if you click the middle one is to select and the right and left one is to go through the menu. So if I go over here to intensity and I press this middle button, it goes down to the intensity. Then I can click and hold to bring the intensity up or bring it down so that we're gonna go through the menu and change some settings here. So press this one more time in the middle and we're gonna change this over. You can see color temperature, plus minus green, saturation, hue, etc. We're gonna to go to the config menu and press the middle button. DMX channel one, that's good. We're gonna go over to number, number of pixels. You want this to be the most, the highest number. So no matter which fixture you're using, just use the highest number and you may need to remember this number later. Let me go ahead and go to the next one. Profile, this is very important. So the profile, you need to switch this to profile 64. And that's gonna be important um, for a few reasons. And let's go ahead and click enter. Wired settings, go, let's go into the wired settings menu. Press the middle button. Wired mode should be SACN. So press enter to accept. Blinks, that means it's gonna take it a minute for it to register this setting. DMX settings, let's go inside DMX settings. Channel should be one. Terminated should be off. Okay, back. Now we're gonna go over to the ethernet settings. Multicast should be enabled. And the universe, this is very important. So right now we're just dealing with this one fixture. One universe one is fine. When we're dealing with the, an array of fixtures, you wanna, name, you wanna number them in this very specific way. You might wanna put tape and remind yourself which universe you set them to. But let's say you have 47 fixtures. The first fixture, in my case, let's say it's the top fixture, is gonna be universe one. The next fixture down will be universe two. The next fixture will be universe three, et cetera. So that's gonna be very important that we make sure we set that up properly on the fixture before we get into live effects. Let's go back and back. So those are the main settings we want to set. Um, 
You can have wireless mode, you can set that to off. Lead follow should be off. And all of the rest of these should be fine. You do want to make sure you're, uh, you're using the latest firmware. And from this menu, you can see which DMX channel it is, how many pixels, which profile it's on. And if you press the power button twice, once, twice, you can actually see which universe is right here. So we can see the multicast is enabled, universe one is this fixture. So you don't have to go through the whole menu to see which universe you're on. You can just press the power button, get to this menu and see which universe you're on here. Okay, so this array that we have here is made up of 47 fixtures. So again, if I press the power button, I can see some information here. You can see that these fixtures are actually 48 pixels and you can see that the profile is set to 64 and you can see DMX is one and SACN is on. That's all great. If I press it again and then one more time. Here I can see this is universe 30. If I cycle through all the rest of these, I'll find that these are in the correct order as well. I set these up. So this is 29, 30. This would be 28, 27, 26, 25, etc. Now let's go look at that in the software live effects. Okay, I've created a blank project here. And you can see if we go into the stage lights tab, you can see that we have no lighting fixtures over here on the left. And let's go ahead and set this up. So the first thing we need to do before we even add a fixture is we want to go to protocols and we want to set up our SACN. So I'm connected to the same network through Wi-Fi, and we're going to go to on to enable multicast and you're going to have to choose whichever network you're on. For me, it's just this one. The universe range depends on how many universes you're using. In my case, I'm actually using quite a bit, so I'm going to go 1 to 200. Priority by default is 100. This can stay that. Um, signal delay, you don't have to worry about. Partial universe, you don't have to worry about right now. So now that that is set up, let's go over to fixture and let's add a new fixture. You can do video fixture or GDTFs or open fixture library. We're going to do this from scratch. So I'm going to create a new fixture and I'm going to call this 848. That's there's 48 uh, eight foot tubes over there. So that's why I named it that. And there's a few things we have to set up here. First thing to know is I'm using universes one through 47 on that array. There's 47 tubes in that array actually. So the eight foot tubes have 48 pixels. So the repeat in universe is going to be 48. The universe start number here is, depends on how you've set yours up. I've set mine up to be, there's 47 tubes. So I'm going to do one through 47. So the starting universe is one. And then to set up profile 64 for the Quasar Science fixtures, channel should be 12, globals should be six, and then repeat the universe for as many fixtures as you have. So in my case, there are 47 fixtures, so I'm going to repeat that 47 times. Now, on top of that, what I need to do is go to the color sampling tab, and instead of duplicate, we're going to go to distribute, and segments should equal the number of fixtures. So I'm going to do 47 fixtures, and I'm going to go ahead and drag this out for a second. And now let's go back to fixture patching. Okay, so let's go ahead and map this fixture. So. The first value is going to be red. Channel one is red. And then it goes fine value. Green. Four is fine value. Five is blue. Six is fine value. And if you can see that, it does not look correct. If I'm dragging over these colors, this should be, you know, teal, green, purple. And they look more like yellow, orange, purple. So what's going on? So the next is these global parameters. And not all fixtures have these, but the Quasar Science do, do and I will, I will go over them uh, right now. Channel 7 is CCT. And we're going to put 147, which is right in the middle. So now that looks correct. And you can change this. If you go higher, it will be higher CCT value and lower will be lower CCT but let's put the default at 147. The next one is plus minus green. 
The next one is spectrum. So channel 9 should be 255 for full spectrum. The next one is color space. The next one is output. And the last one is just reserved. So now these are all set up. We can see they're set up over there correctly. And now what we can do is we can go into the color sampling and we can change things here. Depending on how your, how your fixtures are set up, you might need to rotate these. I'm gonna to go to the mixer and I'm just going to lower the intensity of this so it's not so bright. And now we can use this mixer or we can go to fixture and change the radiation here, the color sampling. There are some of these things that you can change in different areas, but let's just go through some of these. So fixed color is pretty obvious what that is. That is a fixed color and you can change the color. And if you see, if it looks like you can't change it here, you might need to increase the saturation, which is the slider here. You can also pick a color. So pick purple, and now it'll change to that purple. You can go to the gradient animation. You can change some of these values, but only if you're not using fixed sample. So if we come back over here to gradient animation. Now we can individually change these values. So we can increase the saturation, the lightness, etc. So I'm just going to reset these for now and we'll go back to the mixer. And this is basically a similar way to, to navigate and change all of these controls in a much more user-friendly way, especially when you have several different lights. So we can do A for active. So if you disable this, it will not continue to sample. S for solo, F for fixed color, just like we saw. If you click on the color, you can change that color. And then if fixed color is not selected and you click on this color, it will give you access to grade and change the fixture itself. And then lastly is the global parameters. You can see now that I have entered in these names, we get CCT plus minus green spectrum, color space, output and reserve. So I can now just with a slider change the color temperature, etc. Okay, that's gonna wrap up this video. Hopefully this was a really helpful tutorial for you. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments. Make sure to subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video.